garlic chives. Qualities, but I it's sell them uh, like fifteen for three dollars. Okay. Bush. okay. Um, I I would like to so see some properties right? yeah. yeah. It is just a plant that comes up around. And that's through the farmers market. Yeah, the Red Hill. Okay. Yes. And that's why it's called the Four Claws. There you go. There are a couple other ones on the other side that are blooming. Yeah, they keep spreading out. So what part of them do you cut? That yeah, I just cut it at ground level, and they re-sprout. Oh. Yeah, they're perennial. Yeah. And there's some there, and there's some there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. No, that's the other thing. Yeah, I so I like to choose plants that have like a longer flowering or a longer fruiting season. And so this plant comes up, um, you know, in a lot of places. Um, and so when it does, we try to discourage it because it'll really get bushy and kind of get in the, in, in the way. So behind us, behind us, I wanted to show you all. Before we put this landscape fabric down for this season, uh, last, let's see, in the fall time, this was, there was no fabric. We did rose actually oriented, push the lizard. Our rows were oriented this way throughout the whole space. They were short, but many rows. And um, incorporating this fabric, I actually wanted to switch the orientation, not only because I can get away with it with my sunlight needs, but that would allow me to have less cuts on this particular fabric and incorporate um, more you know, growing space and move forward into that area, um, which I'm really happy with. And this is a cover crop? Yes. So this in between. This is uh, turnip, We've done this. Um, kale, mm -hmm. oats. These oats. are oats. Wheat. You'll see it's just, Wheat. just going to seed. And so I wanted to keep, we were going to, we backed this down in our usual systems, but I wanted to keep this area to show you guys this whole area after wow. my fall harvest. You can harvest. sell cover crops. We put in a cover crop of a blend. Wow. I think, where'd we get this from? Native That's your cover crop? Or? This is a deer. Deer cover. Uh, mixture. Wow. So we got this And it has turnips in it. And look, this one's so a, a radish. Deer doesn't like it. Deer love this stuff. Oh, okay. um, it's for a deer plot, but it's great cover crop mix. Yes. Wow. So we, this whole area had this cover crop. Of course, we ended up chopping it down to put this fabric on to continue to grow. But I left this strip here to see how things would play out in terms of it going to seed, continuing to add more, uh, better soil. There's all kinds of things in here that Henry was mentioning that you're taking out of more purple tops. Let's see. So, Bargain, I have a question. So, Daikon radish. Um, yes. So, from a design standpoint, mm -hmm. so the, the city lots are how much? Is that 85? 80. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, that? then is this a 25 foot? Being able to know how to scale mm -hmm. based on your size, yeah. and looking at this yard and you've got fruit trees and things like that, mm -hmm. which is different because this is more of a permanent area. Yeah. But in there, what would be the maximum length, for example, and how to look at what is the best way to maximize what your plot is? Mm -hmm. So these are 25, maybe something around. It's yeah. like 25 by these 50. Are about, yeah. Probably 30 by 50. We used to have the rows going this way, and so we moved them going that way to make the rows longer. So to maximize, um, I would definitely... Um, so from like a production standpoint, yeah. so if you're going to sell, yeah. 25? I, I would say minimum 25. Yeah. Um, so of course you're constrained by your area. For your own family, mm -hmm. when you're starting out, yeah. and you're not going to share what should be the maximum. Oh, depends um, on how much vegetables your family that's eats true, that's because true. we do consultations and installations. And I make this huge garden for a family and they're like, we can't eat this much lettuce. And I was like, I right. can that's eat this point. much lettuce. Right. <laughs> you know? right. yeah. so, so that's kind of relative to, so, yeah. Right. yeah. And based on like the plants and things, obviously, but we're, we've been talking about this, about how fast and you made a comment about okra. Yeah. And squashes like this too. You can, you can literally pick morning, noon and night, mm -hmm. no joke. Especially right. over. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially and with the rains and the sun. So then you have to take that in consideration yes. as opposed to like the celery, which mm -hmm. is going to take a long harvest yes. within the crop design, right? Yes. So if you are growing just for your family, the question mm -hmm. is what do you want to eat? What are your needs? Yes. And how much do you need on a daily basis? Yeah. What, what would you. Yeah. And what's right? the shelf life, too? What's yeah. the shelf life? Yeah. What would you put for my daily edible? Mm -hmm. I know that grows quickly yes. based on the season and then. Maybe the other part mm -hmm. would be for the longer, slower growing. Yes. I don't know. That's just a, that's yes. a question as far as I'm design. glad you brought that up. So when I think of those uh, those systems, um, I think of them or in permaculture we think of them in zones. 
right? So our zone zero, it's a concentric, or it doesn't have to be concentric, it is just based on, um, you know, how things are in your Circles space. within circles. Yes. Yeah. Um, so zone zero, of course, is home and people. And so what systems are in there, how they incorporate food comes into that space, waste comes out of it, right? And so how does that incorporate into zone one? Zone one is this area, is our, our, you know, our annual crops, um, maybe even our chickens if we're collecting eggs, um, you know, things like that. Moving into our zone two, those are our perennial areas, right? Those are our um, crops that continue to produce food, but are not, um, um, but they are not, um, intense or they're, they are not frequently visited in the system right and so these so that area um i would i would probably choose things like sweet potatoes stuff like that that doesn't need as much um uh, maintenance but also could be on an edge of a space so not necessarily in your annual growing space that you are actively you know producing in we could use edges too right and so you you don't have to limit yourself to here's my square this is the only growing area i can use it's my one square there are edges there are so many areas that we can continue to produce in and then moving through the zones we go into zones four and five which are if you have other types of livestock uh orchards uh, maybe it's your structures like a barn or storage or um and then you're going into your zone five which is wildlife unmanaged forested areas right and so in those areas there's a lot of resources we've got leaf fall leaf litter um, forage opportunities, right? There's still food happening in our in those wildlife areas. Those can still be inputs into our zones one and two, right? So, so you uh, could do yeah. a multi-level. Yes. So like a lot of your system there for the trellis. Mm -hmm. But going back to the three sisters, if you have a small lot, mm -hmm. so not only is it going to help with the pest management, weed yes. management, now in almost <laughs> the same space, okay. you're getting two or three crops in a very small space. Exactly. And so we're using those niches of vertical, wow. horizontal, and then in ground. Absolutely. Yeah, so these are, I think, our safari zucchini. Um, so you'll notice that I have a standardized, um, behind the fence we have a standardized uh, plywood, or not a plywood, excuse me, um, a, uh, what do you call it? A, our template. No, sorry, with a T. So we have our template, right? And it's uh, a size of a piece of plywood and we have three rows. Um, they're about eight inches, eight to 10 inches apart for each row. You'll notice that that is not a good spacing for certain plants like, you know, this. So in this system, we do skip poles, we're doing companion planting. The reason why I have it standardized is that I would like to get more use out of this in coming into the fall season and the winter season where I can put every single hole can have a um, you know collard greens or broccoli or whatever the case is and so this particular system instead of changing it or getting new stuff i, I did as dense as possible um, for the season that works best for us which is actually fall and winter um, and so that's the reason why this particular system looks like this you can make your own home. yes and so with our um, with my little handy flame torch my new favorite tool um Hamid does a great job he likes doing it too of, um, yeah, we put our, t we take, we remove this from the garden space. We do not burn plastic into our garden area. We do it over in the concrete. We put, um, I, we put a barrier in between the concrete. Sometimes it's cardboard. And then we put our landscape fabric on top. On top of that will be our template, which is a plywood. And so, um, our, our burning is concentrated into those holes. We use wow. a skill saw. Wow. What is that? Yes. <laughs> This is what happens when you don't pick them every other day. Yes, and so another part, another issue is like you can't even see them, right? Mm -hmm. We gotta go in there. They just continue to grow. And, and so grow. we have um, a summer squash in here, but also winter squash or a long season squash. And so right here, I have not only my butternuts, but I have my seminal pumpkins. And I know because I know the growth pattern of this plant. Is that cucumber? Yeah. No, these are all um, zucchini. So I know the growth pattern for seminal pumpkins, right? And so they are going to move out into a space. And so my intention is that these are on an edge and they're going to move into my food forest system as an understory crop. And so this area, we're going to weed back it. We've got some sunflowers coming up behind you. But all of these seminal squash will occupy this space under my food forest. And they will go essentially to the street. Yeah. Right? And so they produce a significant beard. amount. So they're going to keep... So it's not going to go the other way? No. Well, I'm going to train them to go this way. They're also on this yeah, edge. How many do you need it every day? Yeah. You too. So they're on this edge. You see they're already, they're already making their way over. Way over here. I know it's already popping out of the ground. So, so I mainly just trick... 
So I mainly just train them um, in terms of staying out of their way. In this area, we're going to work a little bit in today. We're going to mulch it, and this will just continue to go across. Yes. If it's starting to go this way, then we will just gently move it. If they're not, some of them will root into the ground, but if they're not, not so like I have to uh, root into them. the ground. If I had like some kind of trellising, perhaps I'll okay. go around it. Some of the squash is fine on the ground. They'll go across. Um, mulch is going to help us even more because that'll keep our humidity down. The one thing about certain squashes, especially um, pumpkins, um, if they're in a food forest system, they're not getting as much sunlight. Um, what helps is putting a mulch barrier down just so um, so things stay drier. You know, having weeds come up and touching them might promote um, powdery mildew, which is a big problem. Um, but again, uh, uh, seminal pumpkins do really really well in this area so we're really happy with them as a ground cover um, a food that is long long lasting uh, and then we get to occupy this understory right because a part of this food forest system is that we can create um, food in different niches right so this a great ground cover covering up my weeds we've got some food um, you know they can even go up into the trees as a vining you know finding tree plant right so so I have this long summer squash. Henry's picking all the zucchini. These are our zucchini plants right here. So these are our relatively shorter lived crops. And once the super heat comes in, bugs are gonna come in. This, these crops right here in particular, we're gonna go ahead and remove. And these seminal pumpkin, they'll hang out until probably October, depending on how the season goes, right? And so that's, this area is designed to move into, into, that, into that space, right? We also have right on this edge here, looks a little different in terms of its leaf size and space. These are butternuts. And so butternut squash, they're plant. Um, they don't hang out as long as, of course, the seminal pumpkin. But the actual squash themselves will hang out on the shelf for months and months and they'll be fine. Wow. So that's our winter squash. They have a very wow. hard... Another thing about walking through it's this forest is squash. trying to not, not crush anything. But of course, we've got our butternuts. I don't know if you guys can see that, but they're coming up oh, oh, right in here. They're oh, everywhere. Wow. They're green right now, but they'll continue to flush out and turn pink. The fabric is keeping them cleaner, too. We're happy with this fabric. Yeah, they're keeping them clean. They're keeping the bugs down. We do have issues with flea beetles. And we're not, we're barely seeing any flea beetle damage here. So we've been able to manage our pest problem without having to spray, of course, which is amazing. We do not want to spray. Um, and yeah, these are going to be bubbles. We're happy with them. Moving into the areas, moving that way, um, this trellising is for cucumbers. You'll notice this block right here, curcumins. I wanted to, my personal design was, I want to make sure that all of these plants are in a similar family because they're not going to be the same family could be at the same time. But also, I can block things out and make sure that if these were all um, multiple plant families, it would just be a little more difficult in terms of my crop Yeah, my crop rotation. It's just more, it's more mental legwork to make sure that the crop rotation is good. And so if it's blocked out well, um, then that rotation is good. I'm still companion planting in this area. I'd like to add, um, we not only are adding nasturtiums and herbs and parsleys and stuff to help with um, our spring perennial, uh, excuse me, our spring predators, spring pollinators, bringing them into the space. Um, it just helps with the pests as well. So, I have a question. Yes. Suppose you don't want these to continue to grow all the way to the tree. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can do? If I would, if I don't want to deter that, yeah. um, if I wanted to deter that, I would consider um, some kind of trellising system. And so if I didn't want them to go across the space, I would probably want them to go up. Okay. So whether that's a fence line, whether that's in the trees, literally in the trees, I could do that. Or if it's incorporating a panel just like this. People do arbor. Yeah, arbors so like this. So a pumpkin this. can grow over yeah. the whole okay. arbor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So or perhaps I would do tunnel, an arbor like this. Down. Okay. Which yeah. we did consider, but of yeah. course that is and investment. Then, <laughs> these are all the meristems. Yes. A meristem so, is, is a point of new growth. Hybrid. Okay. Hybridized variety. And so you can trim the, them. The pumpkin's going into a food forest. Oh, and they won't grow as long, but they'll get bushier. elements that we're incorporating. 